So we're gonna look at extending the peg or the canoe problem. And the book set us up with a nice table for that extension. We're just gonna modify the table a little bit. We need to take a look at uh, pegs per side. I'm gonna put the strategy next. And then I'm gonna put the, um, I need some space there, might be enough space. And then after that, I'm gonna put the a minimum number of moves. And the book claimed that there's one peg on each side that if I'm gonna use a right left pattern, right move, left move, um, book talked about moving red or moving green. So on mine, I moved, let's see, I moved left first and then right and then left. And that's gonna give me three moves. So it was one move for left, one move for right, one move for left. And those are my th three moves. Now I just did it for two pegs. And so I'm gonna repeat that and then write down what I did. So let's reset. And so here's my left and then right. And then it turns out I need to go another right. So that's left, right, right. Now I'm gonna go left, left, right, right, left, and I'm done. So let's see what I did there. I'm gonna summarize it in a couple of ways, trying to find a pattern. And the more you write down, the easier it is to find a pattern. If you don't write enough down, it's harder to find the pattern. So I moved left, oops, it's not a pen. I moved left and then I went right, right. And then I did a left, left and a right, right and followed by a left. And I think if I think about just the groupings of left and right, there was a one left, two rights, two lefts, two rights, one left. And if I add those moves up, I'm gonna get two, four, six, seven, eight moves. Now the hope, of those examples in the book is that after playing around a little bit, you would figure it out for three, what the pattern would need to be. So I can try writing it down and then give it a shot and then see if I can find a relation in the numbers. So let's see, one on each side, one in the middle. This looks like a one, two on each side and a two in the middle. So let's see, does that mean this would be a one, two, three, with a three in the middle maybe, and then a three, two, one, question mark. So I'm thinking that's left, and then right, right, left, 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 right, 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 left, 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 right, right, left. All right, let's give it a try to see if it actually works. So I'm just guessing I often guess wrong and try and figure out what went wrong. So let's see, reset. So I'm supposed to go one left, two right. Oops, I'm supposed to up the number of pieces. Yeah, thanks. There we go, okay. So one and then two and then one, two, three. Okay, so I did my one, two, three. And so there should be another three. So there's three, another three, followed by a two and a one. All right, that I think is what I wrote down. Let's inspect that again. And I got that right smoothly because I practiced this several times in the past. All right, so I, I think this is what I did right here. And the computer said that added up to 15 moves. So I have uh, this one and two is a three and there's another three, three, three. So I have a bunch of threes. I have one, two, three, four, five threes. So yeah, this does add up to 15 there. 
And so the pattern that I think I see then, I'm just gonna color code and say I'm on my highlighter. I saw the one, two, three on one side and the three, two, one on the other. I saw the one, two on one side and the two, one on the other side. And then in the middle is whatever number I'm at. So I think that is kind of the general pattern here. So let's look at the fourth one and oops, let's pick a different color. So for the fourth one, it should be one, and I'm just gonna write the number of lefts and right, and I'll write left to right above. So there should be one left followed by two rights, followed by three lefts, followed by four rights. One, two, three, four. And then there's gonna be four lefts in the middle. And then we start counting down the other way. Four, right, and it's gotta alternate, right, left, right, left, but a different number of each. All right, so then I'm gonna go three, two, one, left, right, left. And if I add those up, what does it come to? I have uh, one, two, three, fours, so that's 12. And then I have one plus two plus three is six and another six. 12 plus six plus six is gonna give me 20. There should be 24 moves for that. So I should be able to go back to that app and try it and see if I get it right. Now, if I make a mistake, it's gonna tell me once I made the mistake, ooh, you, you, you made a bad move. And I have to try again. Uh, so I'm gonna skip showing that right there, but you can feel free to try that on your own if you want. Uh, I just wanna think about this pattern some more and see if I can continue it based on what I know. What's that? I think that's the answer I got for the activity one in order to- Yes, do yeah, almost everybody got this right. Um, and then the, the thing about problem solving is how do we know it's right? So the computer said it was, and I have some evidence here in my table that said it was. So I'm just gonna take it a step farther. So two things I would need to do to proceed. One, I need to try that on the computer and see if I can get it to work in 24 moves. Two, I want to continue to look at this pattern right here that I found the one and then one, two, and then one, two, three, and one, two, three, four. And see if I can find in general, maybe a formula for these numbers. Now, this activity was not to find a formula for those numbers. It was yeah. just, can you show me some work to justify that 24 moves is the way to go? All right, so I'm taking this just a step farther than what I asked about. Because yeah. it, it turns out we've seen enough math to do this. There's a little pattern with the mim the minimum moves. Uh, yep. Three, it goes up five, and then from eight, it goes up seven, and then from 15, it goes up nine. Yes, yeah, and there's a pattern to those numbers. It turns out those numbers are equally spaced. That's a good point. So let's write that down, and then I'll look at it another way. So we've got three, eight, 15, 24. All right, so three, eight, 15, 24, and you mentioned that the increase here to get from three to eight, we have a plus five. To get from eight to 15, we have a plus seven, and to get from 15 to 24, we have a plus nine, and then we should notice that from five to seven is plus two, and seven to nine is plus two, so I can use this to continue and tell you how many are going to be in the fifth uh, stage where there's five pegs on each side. So from nine, I should add two. So that's gonna give me nine plus two is 11. And so 24 plus 11 leads me to believe that there's gonna be 35 moves in the next one. So I'm just gonna justify that a diff or two different ways actually. So that pattern seems pretty good, right? We have a constant row of differences there. We have a, a changing row of differences here, but it's a changing by that constant amount. So this should be five versus five pegs or five versus five in the canoe, the minimum number of moves. We saw that pattern a slightly different way in that table I just had where it should be one left followed by two rights, followed by three lefts, four rights, five lefts. There'll be five rights in the middle and then we go down the other way. Five, four, three, two, one. So this should be the set of moves for the whole left, right, left, right, left, right, 
left, right, left, right, left. And so we should be able to take that system over to the app and do it. And if we're careful, we should be able to get it in the minimum number of moves. And let's just double check what these numbers add up to be. So uh, I have a bunch of fives right here. So those guys right up there add up to 15. And one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10. So there's a 10 over there and a 10 over there. And if I add all that, those up, those add up to definitely to 35. Right, so that's confirmation of the pattern I found there. Take it one step farther. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five, right? Then we have the plus five in the middle. Let's make that a different color. And then we have to back down five plus four plus three plus two plus one. Now, we discovered a shortcut for adding up consecutive numbers like this, one through n. And this really is the same sum right there. And that shortcut was take the first term plus the last term, so 1 plus 5, multiply by the number of items there, that would be 5, and then divide by 2 in there. Same thing over here. This would be 1 plus 5 over 2 times 5, and then the 5 is just chilling in the middle. And I can replace these fives with a four or a three, and I'm going to still get the right answer. Yeah. Five. Now, in general, our formula, like if somebody says, okay, well, what about, can you put an N in there? And the answer is, yeah, it would just be one plus two all the way up to dot, 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 up to N plus the special N in the middle plus, then we back down the other way and all the way down to plus two plus one. And so this group right here is going to be n plus 1 or 1 plus n over 2 times n. There's the plus n in the middle. And then this one right here is just going to be the same thing I started with, n plus 1 over 2 times n. And then we can clean that up a little bit. We have two of these, right? So if I, if, if I add those together, that's basically doubling this number. And so the doubling and the divide by two are going to cancel. So my claim is that those two right there add up to n plus one times n. And then I have this extra n to add on. And so almost the last step, distribute n squared plus n plus that other n. I think for any value of n, if we square it and then add n back on, or no, add two of them back on, if I can only count, this should be the minimum number of moves. And again, finding this formula was not part of this project, this activity. It was just coming up with the 24 and being able to justify it. But, it, but because we have a pattern here, 3, 8, 15, 24, and now 35, sometimes we can find a formula. And it turns out I was able to find a formula here because I recognized something I'd done before, adding up one, two, three, four, five, for example. Now, if I didn't recognize that pattern right there, then this would be very hard to come up with a formula. And there are some lists of numbers like this where the formula is impossible or just wicked hard and it's easier to just continue the pattern this way. It just kind of depends on the situation. We could study patterns like this all quarter, but we're not going to. So I'm just going to test this right here. Test my formula. Um, I know that if there were, let's go back to my table. If there were three, on, or let's, let's go to two on each side, because the book did that one for us. If there's two pegs on each side, the minimum number of moves should be eight. So then we're gonna, just going to plug in n equals two to our formula. So that would be two squared plus two times two. Two squared is four, two times two is four, four plus four is eight, and yeah, it works out the right way. So if you're persistent enough and you recognize something you've seen before, then you can kind of put things together in new ways uh, to describe a pattern, to double check something. So I thought that was cute in that it was related to other patterns that we've seen. And the book at the end of section two goes over what's called the handshake problem, which is very similar to this one right here. Same math, slightly different context.